So why don't we start at the beginning? Uh, since you are an investor, uh, I, I'd love to for you to share why you decided to invest in Maximus. Uh, I mean, first and foremost, I invested because of you. So I think Cam, you're you're I, I've known you for a long time, and I think one thing that I've realized with especially as I've done more and more investing is that there's literally infinite capital in the world. And I think you see that now with valuations, crypto assets, everything kind of mooning and then the government's printing out free dollars. Uh, so there's capital is there. I think there's actually a lot of great ideas uh, to solve. I mean, clearly there's a lot of problems with our society and our world. So I think what the limiting reagent is are actual entrepreneurs, founders with high integrity, fearlessness, boldness, and just seeing your academic background, your clinical training, uh, and then that focus and that boldness in terms of like speaking towards masculinity in a way, in a way that's unabashed bold, I think was, 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 was amazing and awesome. So I think first and foremost, I think back in the jockey, uh, it was one of the key reasons here. And then two, I think the problem that you know you're solving, we're solving with Maximus, is incredibly important. I think uh, I'm sure through these conversations, just the testosterone, uh, kind of like the trend of masculinity in Western civilization is in a very weird, awkward spot. I'm sure we'll cover un and un unpack that. Um, and having a community, having a, a telemedicine platform, really addressing and speaking towards those needs seems to be more important than ever. So I think from a founding perspective and the problem set as is, uh, probably one of the top three, top five problems that we as a culture really need to solve. Thank you very much. Well, first of all, I always appreciate the, the vote of confidence. Uh, and, I, and now I feel uh, obligated to, to fulfill that. Um, but you know, it's funny, I remember we've, I've actually been on your podcast twice and I very much appreciate having me as a guest. Uh, but the last time I went on, you know, we actually, at the very, very end of it, we were mostly talking about dopamine fasting, but I did start to talk about sort of the masculinity stuff and some of the theses that I was beginning to form. Um, and funnily, uh, you know, we took a little clip of that, threw it on TikTok, and that's by far the most viral <laughs> clip that actually uh, that talks about there's no such thing as toxic masculinity versus, you know, toxic behaviors. Um, so yeah, it's kind of interesting to see that sort of resonate in the public as well. Yeah, and I think, and I think part of it's like there's some boldness and fearlessness here because at least what I perceive with mainstream culture and mainstream uh, media is that there is such an empowerment for women's uh, equality. And I think those are all very, very great. Sure. But I think where it's very, very uh, potentially uh, going back to where toxic is that now you can't talk about masculinity and you can't talk about what it means to be a man. And there needs to be a counter poll. There needs to be a strong leaders that actually actively speak out and carve out our own narrative here. Uh, I think most people just want to live a happy everyday life and they don't really think about their identity or their masculinity or femininity. I, I think it's just like people are individuals just living their life. And I think there is such a strong push. And in some ways, from a cultural perspective, like a very legitimate cause to try to level the playing field across gender, sexuality, sex, all these attributes that n n none of us really choose. Mm -hmm. um, but I think where it goes off the deep end is when you start bashing men. And, and, I, and, and I think we all know what we're talking about here, where it's like, oh, all men are evil. All men are bastards. It's like, uh, I, don't, I don't know who you are. I didn't do anything to you. Sure, right, right. <laughs> yeah. I mean, certainly we all want a, a more equal playing field, but yeah, I, I think uh, sometimes people I take that a little bit to the extreme and tilt, quite frankly, the, the playing field in an unfavorable way. I think the unfortunate thing is, you know, um, in, in sort of today's cancel culture, it's very easy to sort of get painted with the, what I'll call the ist brush. You're either, you know, sexist or racist or misogynist or, or uh, transphobic or whatever ist. And, and those are such powerful labels that obviously will, you know, get you quite frankly fired or, or uh, ostracized in modern society that, that we become paranoid, that you cannot speak out against any um, or, or speak for, quite frankly, anything that may even remotely move you in that direction. Because the moment someone paints that brush, it's almost like I, I call it sort of modern McCarthyism, right? Um, where back in the day, people forget that we had, we went through this history in, in U.S. culture 
where, you know, uh, if you didn't like someone, you just called them a communist and they literally couldn't get work in Hollywood. They were literally put on a blacklist. They were unhirable. Um, and we realized that was ridiculous because most of those people weren't communists. They're just people who were whatever competitors or people you didn't like. And, uh, and as soon as you painted them with that brush, boom, they're gone. Um, and obviously that was, that was very toxic for American society. And, and we, we stopped that and it took a little while. Um, but it's interesting that we're almost like repeating history over and over again. And I think we're doing it not with, um, with communism, but with the, the ist uh, labels, unfortunately. 100%. And I think, again, I th just having conversations with folks on, the, on, on that side of house, I think they're trying to do well. I, try to, I think they're trying to do good. I think a lot of their efforts, uh, unfortunately, are misguided. And then too, this is not even talking about the biological problem that I think, you know, you're leading the way on. And I think we're just seeing within the community, testosterone is just dropping year after year after year after year. And our, you know, the average, our average grandfather was just like, had much more testosterone or male sex hormone than us. And just like, no one's really talking about it or even thinks it's even a problem. I think some would even say, oh, that's actually a good thing. We need less testosterone in the world. And it's like, uh, let's, 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 let's hold on and like, let's break that down from just like a physiological, uh, biological perspective, let alone the social cultural implications. Right. Yeah, I think it's very misguided because people associate testosterone with um, aggression, which is not necessarily true. Um, in fact, uh, we know from actually like testosterone uh, studies where they like, uh, you know, increased it. It actually has like a calming influence um, on people. So uh, it's actually the opposite.